Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Eternal MMA 32 Recap. My name is Mitchell Tinley, and uh, I'm going to be having a chat today with some of the fighters. Uh, catch up, just get their thoughts on the card that was in uh, Adelaide Titanium Security Arena. Eternal MMA was there last Saturday night, and boy, was it impressive. It was different. Uh, I was ring announcing there. Uh, just in case you're like, who's this guy and what's he talking about? But uh, yeah, I was there. It was just a beautiful event. Had half the arena uh, curtained off. We had the jumbo screen. It was just, it was it was awesome. And more eternal events uh, should be like that. On this podcast, we're going to catch up with uh, Diego Caruso, uh, who took on Stephen Thalas. Uh, he won by rear naked choke. That was pretty amazing as well. And the Caruso brothers, if you don't know them, if you're in WA, they're like the Della brothers, but probably talk a little bit more shit. Nah, shit's probably the wrong word. They they talk a little bit more, but they're they're very respectful and they're they're really great guys. Uh, especially you got to catch up with both of them for a little bit. Uh, Antonio the Spartan uh, Caruso, uh, that's very important that bit. Uh, he broke his hand, uh, Tony, and uh, so he's at the doctor's office when I catch up with them. But yeah, I spend most of the time talking to Diego Caruso and just getting in their mind. Uh, about their event in Adelaide. And also catch up with the uh, long-awaited Eternal Featherweight Champion, Ryan Gray, who uh, tapped out uh, Miles Simpson with a guillotine. That's right, I said tapped out. Cam, if you're listening, that's what the scorecards were written. He was getting mad because I kept saying uh, winner by tap out, but that was the official thing that was said. It was said tap out, okay? And I got to read it to keep my job, okay? I would have said sub. That's just a story for another day, okay? Anyway, guys, let's get straight into it. Uh, if you do like it, though, let me know or let Eternal know. Uh, tell your friends, tag your friends if they're talked into. There's a lot of fighters getting called out uh, later with Ryan Gray, which is bloody beautiful. He's really taken on the the heel role, and Caruso is obviously uh, thanking another 137 people. So you might be one of them. If you are or you know them, tag them, let them know. Uh, let's get this podcast around. Hopefully these can be a little bit better because if they get a better reception, I'll start doing them before shows as well. Really drawing up the hype. But anyway, my name is Mitchell Tinley. This is Eternal MMA 32 Fight Recap. And uh, and yeah, here it is now. We're starting off with Diogo Caruso. Enjoy. Hello, Mr. Caruso. It's uh, Mitchell Tinley. How are you? Hey, brother. How you doing? Yeah, really, really, really good. Um, how are you feeling? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty good, man. I'm just... Uh the hospital picking up Tony because he had to have surgery on his hand. Yes, I saw it was like a clean break. How's he doing? Yeah, no, no, he's pretty good, man. He's just staring at me now thinking, why isn't everyone talking to me? I'm the co-man event, not this guy. <laughs> 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 no, 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 yeah, man. So he's just, uh, oh, he's, all, he's all good. We're just waiting for the doctor to clear him so I can take him home now. Oh, how's, uh, have, do we have any like word on how long we think it's going to be? Um, how long they say it's going to be, Tony? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just put him on the phone with you, man. Can you hear us? Wicked, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Tony, how you doing? You're good, brother. Good yourself? Sorry, as I must apologize, the Spartan, as oh, I it, as I so yeah. rudely uh, left off your intro. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, mate. Everyone gets one. Everyone gets one. So let off. Oh. Now, uh, speaking, switching over to Diego, uh, his uh, nickname, it's, it's Cabretti. Is that correct? No, 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 man. I don't know if you put that there, man. I think I had it on Facebook as a joke. If anything, I'd probably... Oh, just get the doctor. Oh, the ox talking out. Just going to take Tony off for a sec because the doctor's in here. Yep, sounds good. Um, I, if anything, I just use my normal name. Otherwise, I just use the Colossus because that my mum's from Rose. Yep. And, and on the island, there's the Statue of Colossus, so I've got that tattoo on my arm. Yep. That's the name I would use. Where did the... What 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 does Cabretti even mean? Uh, you ever seen the movie Cobra with uh, Sylvester Stallone? Oh, yes, yes. As a joke, I had on this Facebook, I think someone who ever did those profiles on MMA just used that name. I don't know why, and it's always stuck, so everyone keeps asking me. So, <laughs> Cabretti's his name in the movie. <laughs> so, if anything, people always say the Colossus, because I've got the tattoo on my arm. Yeah. Oh, that's because uh, that's on your shirt dog profile and everything. Yeah, I know, man. I know. But you know what? I can't even change it. And one, I'm just that lazy. I probably don't even know anymore. So, like, when people ask me, I say, look, I just use my name, yeah, but I guess you're going to call me anything, whatever I'm calling me. Everyone just calls me, like, they'll say the Colossus because uh, of the paddle Yeah, it's funny. You're probably going to make it to the UFC and that's going to end up <laughs> as your name and you're going to be stuck with it forever. 
I don't know about that, but look, look if it does, I don't mind either. But yeah, generally, I'd say the cost. I wouldn't take a Brady. <laughs> Well, mate, um, obviously super impressive uh, fight you had on uh, on the weekend. Uh, how, yeah. I mean, take take me through it, man. Like it was it was tough to to sink in that choke. What was going through your mind? Um, look, to be honest with you, man, it was. To be honest with you, it was just. I don't even like probably coming up to the fight. I was extremely nervous, and then just literally just before I went out there, Tony just said to me, "He's like, there you go." The level that we've trained at, what we've done, the people we have in our camp, the way you train, I have confidence in yourself. So once once I got on his back, I'll be honest with you, like there was no doubt that I was ready to um like once I had his back and I had the choking, it's just a matter of time. He's just delaying the inevitable. Yeah. Pretty much. I just because from what we'd worked on from all the positions, once I was on someone's back, you know, I was just like a demon on there. So, you know, like even Tony, generally both of us, once we get on someone's back we're usually going to get the choke on you, you know what I mean? Or we're going to do a lot of damage. So once I had the choke on him, it locked on pretty tight. It was just a matter of just sort of squeezing it on, not burning your arms. It's yeah, because you were working those grips. You were really working those grips and going back, and you could tell you weren't just going 100% trying you know, to finish it. No, and that's why, you know, like, turns like position ball for submission is something we talk about in jiu-jitsu. And um, so, you know, I knew I had the position. I knew he wasn't going to go anywhere. It's just... The only thing was, inside those gloves, if you look, there's like a circle, but it had like this, I don't know, like a leather strip going across the middle for some reason. It's a bit yep. weird. But his finger was getting stuck in it. That's why I kept punching him in the head to like move <laughs> his hand. Yeah. So when he moves, I finally slipped it on. And once I had it on, that's when I cranked it. Yeah. Is um, it was man, it was super impressive. Like, uh, <laughs> like I, I, I don't have the the full time, but it would have been a good minute that you were you were there trying to work that. And if anyone's uh, been in that spot, yeah, about that, about that, yeah, probably about a minute, man. So you know, one, one, look, once I was on there, man, I, to be honest, I was comfortable. Just it was a matter of just waking away and getting there. And look, to be honest, man, even when I'm on good people's back, you know, they find it hard to get off. So like, I thought, unless this guy's an absolute freak, there's no way he's going to be moving here. So look, I knew I had it on there, just just a matter of time that's all so and you know you don't want to rush because yeah sometimes when you're in a good spot you go ballistic because you're just like you yeah. know, i want to finish him i want to finish him and that happened in my last fight the guy the poor bastard he, he i went for a takedown and somehow he ended up on top and he just started like bang throwing ground and pound and he wasn't even hitting me and he just burned himself out so by the second round he could barely stand and i could see in his face he was done so then i was like oh well Man, you poor bastard! You, you're done. Man. You're mine for the picking. So it's just one of those things, man. So yeah, you know, Bruce, like I said, man, just the way it was set up yeah, to getting him on the ground to like once it was on the back, man. That's where I, really that's where I wanted to be. I envisaged the whole time that if I got on his back, it was good night. So yeah, man, I was very confident. Now you're a purple belt, uh, and who was yeah. that? Who was that under? What's your what's your lineage? So. The guy that coaches me is uh, his name's Peter O'Shea. So he's oh, head yes. Coach of Northside. Yes. And we run under, if you know, Leonardo Aruda, which is Team Aruda. Yep. So Leo's the head branch, which, you know, he's had a big part like, in Peter's development. And also, we train there a fair bit. But Pete's the guy that's definitely like, had the most influence on me regarding jiu jitsu. And um, what's it like having such a, a, a well experienced guy like Alan Philpot in your corner? Oh. Uh, Alan, I think. I think. So, oh, sorry, man. So, um, look, having Alan, man, like, man, it's priceless. You know, you've got a guy who's been in there 44 times. He's 25 years old. He yeah. grew up in the cage. So, like, <laughs> if you, like, there's a lot of videos where you'll see, like, uh, for the, like, our guy that does a lot of media stuff, you'll see in the background, everyone's sort of extreme, you know, that serious yeah. face. Alan's laughing, and he's just saying, man, because he knows he's been there, he's done it, he's seen what we've done. He's seen the work we put in. He just was saying the whole time, like, man, you got this. Like, it, it's over. Like, there, there's not anyone that I know of that, that even like, you know, with the boys you train, that's going to beat him. And he's just too good, you know? And he, yeah. he literally was laughing. So it was weird to have that <laughs> kind of thing. And to have him backing you like that with a guy that experienced to say, hey, man, you're that good, it just made, it makes you always feel invincible. You're bulletproof. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, what what does it feel like? A lot of people uh, in their home ground, you know, in front of all their friends and family, they they almost find that it doesn't help them; it hurts them. <laughs> how how, do, how does you feel going through all of that? You had basically the whole arena. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Look, I'll be honest with you. Being the brother of Tony, because Tony has a lot of hype, man. Um, yeah, he has a lot of potential regarding MMA and also to his boxing. So. He built, you know, he wants to build up every fight as big as possible. And being his brother, you know, you have, in a way, you, you're part of that. So, look, man, there was a big part of me that was definitely 
a bit like really nervous in the sense of you know you don't want to let everyone down because it's built up. You know we've got the banners, the posters, the, the shirts, yeah, the height. You know your brother, oh, your brother Tony. You know, and everyone's got that expectation of you. But um, it's sort of weird, and I don't really care too much for a guy like Mayweather because I, I think he's killing boxing away. But he said one thing that really stuck with me. He goes, "Pressure makes diamonds." Yeah, and that in like. Uh, like yeah, we call it. that was coupled with the fact that the training that we've done, like Tony's like me, you haven't missed a beat. You push me because you worked hard. Those two things, just when I walked down, I heard the song and Fifty Cent started sort of playing. That whoop your head, man! I just turned to like it just went ghetto for me. I was like, man, this guy doesn't have a chance. <laughs> like, I just was like, even like almost a little bit of just my movement in the cage. You can see like real stalky, like looking for that right hand because I could see him dropping his hand like. I know what the hell went out. It was like, man, everything of every bit of nerve, every bit of doubt just left me. And it was like, man, you just, like I say, invincible was the feeling with just all, you know, Alan, my brother, the, the training. You know what I mean? Tony's like, the hard work is done outside the cage, man. Now it's time to get what's yours. And that, that's all it was. I think for me, it was getting what I, what I literally had. How was the, how's the weight cut for you? Oh, for me, man, the, like, to be honest with you, the weight cut's like simple. Like, I literally walk around at 79 to 80. And I ate literally all the way up until so the, the night before the weigh-in. I had salmon, which was probably the lightest meal with no carbs. Yep. And then the Saturday, I had a little, really light breakfast. And then I deliberately sort of just didn't eat. I knew I was under, but just to make sure. So to be honest, there was like half a day really of just not eating to like cut that weight. I didn't even really have to go in the sauna. I just went in the sauna literally because just to keep my body thing and Tony had a little bit more to go but yeah. he, he was pretty close to the weight as well well how far away from you from say a lightweight fight um you ever ever considered it mm, look I, like I'm flirted with the idea and like, obviously Tony's like I mean you know you, you could probably make that weight pretty easy and to be honest with you I think with the way in which like obviously I do a lot of diet stuff for both Tony and I because I'm really interested and yeah. I, I don't think I'd have an issue getting down to 70 like to be honest with you and comfortably Yes, because I um I mean as as a, a massive compliment, but yeah, you are a much smaller frame than a, a, a lot of other guys at at welterweight. Yeah. I know, I was sort of a bit annoyed by that. I looked at the other guy, I thought he's bigger than me. <laughs> so I was really upset by that, you know. And he like um, but uh, yeah, look, I, a lot of people have said to me, like, you should probably go down to seventy. They're like, for seventy seven, a big powerful guy, but they're like, at seventy, man, you'd be a monster. Yeah, and that, but that's the thing. It's like, do you want to? I mean, you feel good. You're performing well. At welterweight, do you want to make that cut and then maybe, you know, you don't feel the same way, you don't have the same strength and, and whatnot? Yeah, look, that's definitely something that crosses in my mind. But, but then again, like, I just, I don't think I'm ever going to know unless I try it. Um, so, yeah, look, it's something to look, I guess, towards in the future, you know, if I want to sort of keep going down the path of fighting. Um, so, if, look, if I am to keep going down, I'll probably consider 70. Yeah. For the next one. Um, but, yeah, so at the moment, look, 77, obviously I'm not doing too bad there. I like, you know, I beat... Um, Say, uh, come his surname. He, he's fought on Hex a few times. He's not a bad little fighter. You know, he's a wrestler. I like, out wrestled the guy. You know what I mean? Like, wrestlers are known for their grind. Um, but yeah, Said, like, Said Kar- Karaz, I think it is. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. you know, and he, look, man, good fighter. Like I said, I think he just he just went a little bit too hard. But at the same time, too, like, it was a, it was literally a scramble and a wrestling match. And I had grinded him. And he's an Iranian background wrestler who, like, they're traditionally very good at wrestling. Yeah. Um, you know, I was able to outgrind him. So, look, at 77, I'm pretty comfortable. At 77, I guess, if I keep going, because Tony's in the same division, would be something that I'd probably look at going down. Yeah, yeah, of of course. Uh, Given that I'm the, like, probably the smaller frame out of the two. Yeah, it's um, it, there's always that. There's always, I don't know if you know the Della brothers in, in WA, but they've got a similar yeah. sort of dynamic yeah. where one of them's the, the longer and the other one's the, the stockier. Yes, yeah, yeah. So if anyone was to move down, if we kept going that, like if we keep, like if I keep playing, I guess, it would be like something I have to consider because obviously we don't want to be in the same division. Yes. And look, do you want to uh, just have a look at your record? And it looks like, uh, I mean, your first fight was 2015 and next one was 2016 and this one was 2018. Uh, are you looking to get more fights in the year or are you happy with, with your time frame? Um, I don't know, man. It's really hard, you know I mean? I guess the other ones that were like, the first one was a little bit of a, a difficult one because no one, like everyone was overseas, like Tony wasn't here. So I didn't really have anyone to suppose. This was just me and a friend that we just saw, like, hey man, why don't we jump in there? <laughs> um, the guy come in overweight, so he's a bit of a bigger fella than me. But just the nerves that really cost me that one, you know, it went down to a decision. It was just, yeah, you know, he didn't really do much. It was just a really crappy sort of match. Um, 
Then after that, obviously, I went to avenge the win. This one here was more so, like, I wasn't even really looking to fight, to be honest. And then um, Cam approached me regarding Tony. He said, oh, you know, I really want your brother Tony on the card. So, you know, he proposed a, a deal, which was really good. And he said, like, just in passing, hey, um, you know, I wouldn't mind having you on the card. Yeah. You know, I thought it was all in my head. There's not too many brothers that fight on the same show. Exactly, yeah. And in their hometown, and, you know, like, I, you know, I knew that if we get on the card together, you know, we're going to bring in the most people. So I thought, you know, what kind of opportunity is that you, you share something with your brother that, like, no matter how close you are as a teammate, you, I don't think you can ever experience. Like, similar with, you know, Della brothers you mentioned, the Mokotarian brothers, you got that bond with each other that, like, yeah, all right, you fight like cat and dogs. Like, you know, we had a couple of <laughs> a couple of times we wanted to punch each other out, but... um. But it's, it's something that, like, you know, you share. It's pretty special. You know, you can see, like, between us, just the yeah. excitement and, um, yeah, you know, those things. Minus, I guess, putting the pressure on each other. Yeah. I mean, I walked into that card, I mean, not knowing much about uh, about South Australian MMA. It's all been Queensland, WA, yeah. all, the, all the big Melbourne ones. But leaving that, I was like, man, the Caruso's in, in Adelaide. <laughs> like, uh, so it was kind yeah, of, look, I think it was great. It was a great, you sold basically that, that arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, look, for me, it was, um, you know, opportunity to work with my brother, but also too, like both of us together to like, I guess in a way, like I wanted to confirm that our name, the Caruso name, when you think of MMA and SA, there's no one that's even going to be closer. Like we are MMA and SA. So I wanted to make that really bold statement. And, um, you know, I think, I think we did it on the night, you know, like, um, you know, everyone's like, oh, that looks so easy. I'm like, <laughs> the amount of background training that goes into making it look that easy, you, you wouldn't even like understand. Like there was times that I didn't, especially with Tony, because he just, Man, in the morning and night, he just kept training. Like, even the Michael Tony's like, man, you know, maybe you trained a bit too much. No, nah, <laughs> keep running. But, man, there's days I just want to be like, Tony, look, man, I'm just going to throw in the town, brother. I don't need this. It's just too much. <laughs> but um, that's the challenge we set out. And, yeah, man, I'm, re- I'm really happy with the outcome. And, yeah, look, it's just, it's a, it's the reward we both got for putting it all on the line, one, because there is a lot of pressure going on the show, being brothers. And also, too, you know, we're representing our home city. Like, you, the guys are coming from out of town to our town, Adelaide. You know, so we've got to, uh, you know, we've got to put up a fight and a name. And, um, you know, that's the, uh, I guess, the motto of my entrance song. It was an Italian song, but it's like defend the city. And that's essentially what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to remind everyone, like, hey, this is Adelaide. You come in. We're not a pushover. Oh, I loved it, man. I loved, I loved your intro. I love all of that. Obviously, you can tell by how I ring announce. Like, I love that. I love that <laughs> hype. It just, it, it, it makes it different between watching two guys just, they, you could have two of the best martial, martial artists fighting. If they're fighting just around the corner, it's amazing. But the, the average fan doesn't get to understand it until you yeah. do what you guys have done. You know, the shirts, the <laughs> banners, the 407 Caruso's coming out with you. Like, <laughs> that sort Look, of, I, it was just amazing, man. It was really, it was really, really good. Look, I have to say, like, a big, big part of us, like, although we get in the cage, the team behind it, man, like, I couldn't thank the boys enough. Like, from my mate Robbie, like, our mate, or rather, sorry, he does T-shirt sales, talking to the promoters, all the ticket all the arranging, all the sponsor arranging, like, all the seating arrangements, like, getting everything together. Then to the Majika boys, like, my, we've been friends since primary school, you know, Vic, Eddie, and Rick. Yeah. Those boys there... The level of detail they put into the photos, the videos, the, the promos. Oh, it's insane. The, 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 the songs, like how they mix in and all that stuff, you know, like adds to that hype. And that's probably the one thing that, like, I started to get worried about because the night before I'm thinking, oh, man, look at all these banners, you know, it's got me and Tony's huh. face on it, the t shirt. I've got this bloody song I'm going to walk out to. Imagine if I get my ass kicked in front of me. <laughs> think, but, but, you know, fortune favors the brave. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I made sure that I didn't miss a beat. And, um, yeah, but the, the team behind us, I mean, yeah. our family, the sponsors, like, they are huge and alive. Even Tony will tell you, man, you, you, we couldn't be grateful enough to how good they are to us. Oh, it's, it's, and it's one of those games where, where people think sponsors will come to them or, or, or fame will come to them. And it's, it's a two way street. You, you got to give a little, like, I came in, like I said, not knowing a lot of the fighters. I mean, I did some research, but I didn't know a lot of guys, but I left mm-hmm. going, Oh, those guys have got something. They've, they've got <laughs> it. And it's because of that. It's, it's, look, it's not all bells and whistles. But no. look, that is that is the piece that that might push you above someone who's maybe just as good a fighter, just as good a record. But what yeah. you've got, man, it's like a it's like a business at the same time, and you obviously know that because you've got your your law background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, you know, like that does help. But um, just in regards to that, like I said, the people I mentioned on the outside, but like minus me, the people around us. It, like when you come to that, like it, it, we try to make it as professional as possible. When you go there, it's like you have that atmosphere. 
So, you know, you got everyone around us, you got the banners, you got the, the t-shirts, you got the hype. Like, you need to build that up. And a lot of people, I think, miss that because, yeah, like you say, they could be a great fighter, but without that hype sometimes, it might not get you recognized because it is a very competitive kind of market. Yeah, and it's, it's especially around that that six, like zero to six fights, there's a lot yeah. of guys that are around zero to six fights and they don't they don't get that little, that, that burst out. You know, when you start yeah. getting to 10 to 15 fights, People start jumping on you, getting on board because they can see the UFC and that stuff's close. Yeah. But you guys kind of have to create your own steam early, and and what you're doing, I mean, you've got to put guys away in the fights, which uh, is obviously the main bit that you're uh, taking yeah. care of. But yeah, the other yeah. stuff, man, I'm su- I'm super impressed with because it just for a guy that didn't know anything about you guys, I now walk away going, oh, these guys got something. <laughs> I mean, look, it's definitely a good luck. I think in a big part, like a lot of the hype, which. I was like worried about would put a lot of pressure on me was with Tony because obviously he's like fought pretty high profile regarding yeah. boxing and he sort of had you know he's like 4-0 and oh, like in boxing he's been sort of giving everyone a bit of a flogging like he's got that like massive background it filtered onto me where naturally even when I went to ADT people were like oh that's a Caruso yeah you know, like the, I thought oh and I was worried and Tony's like man don't he goes back yourself you know what I mean so sometimes I do have that little bit of doubt in my mind where it's like good to have reassuring people around you that like man, you're here for a reason. Like, you earn your spot. Don't feel like you don't belong here because that's going to just cost you, like, mentally. Like, you know, you're the, going into that fight, the only person that was going to win that and lose that was myself. That's literally, it. like, yeah. oh, I either was going to mentally fold or I was going to win because, you know, that's just what we do. And, um, and I, nah, think, look, I think you did that, though. Like, in, in the fight, there was not... Uh, it didn't feel like you were trying to win it because you would... Uh, if you didn't, you'd throw it off for your brother. Like, you went through a moment where you went, no, 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 this bit's about me and about my fight. Yeah. Now, look, you know what? The hardest thing of fighting with Tony was the fact that, like, you know, even you ask him, I'm so into that kid. I'll like, yeah. like, give everything for him because we are very close. But, you know, just before the final brother hugged me and he's like, bro, forget about me for a minute. This yeah. is your moment. Like, you earned the right to have your moment. So when I got in the man, he was just like, yeah, like I said, that music come on, man. I was just like, man, I didn't matter. Like, there could be 20 guys in that cage. There's only <laughs> one person coming out with a hammer. And that was me, you know? So it was... Uh, a moment of just for myself, which is great. And, you know, I earned that. So, no, it was really good. That's awesome. And what what do you see, you know, in the near future? Like I was saying, do you, do you want to fight straight away or, or what, what's the plan? Uh, look, um, at the moment, like, first day we leave for Japan. So, like, literally, I've just been thinking about this fight, man. It's been consuming me for so long. So, <laughs> I'm going to take the time off for Japan. Um, and, you know, look, I'll speak to my brother. If, if there's... Uh, the boy, you know, my, my team, my brother, my coach, yeah. Don, Peter, et cetera, all the guys that put it work in, they're like saying, hey, man, if you want to fight, you can fight, man. You know, if it's in my best interest. Like, you know, the best thing about my team is they're very honest, you know what I mean? If you're not putting in the yard at training, it might yeah. be hurtful. Like, you know, sometimes if I wasn't pushing hard enough, turned like, man, you're being lazy, don't go through the motions, which uh, which is a habit of mine, you know? So I'm in the gym, I'm working every day, but Tony's like, you're not grinding, Diego. You just throwing your hand out and three hands because everything has to be like with intent, with a purpose because you're not doing that. So if if it's beneficial for me and like, you know, I turn around and say, look, man, I want to fight and the boys are like, yep, yeah, you're good and I get my body up to condition and I train like I have, then yeah, you know, I, I don't, I see that maybe it could be something that maybe I do have a few more fights. Um, it's just something that I'm, I'm not 100% certain about it this moment. So that's your thing. You just gonna... you just kind of like in into the fight, taking it literally one fight at a time. There's no yeah, like much. career aspirations uh, in terms. Okay, cool. Not not at this point for me, essentially, no. Like I haven't really sort of given that any consideration just because, yeah, you know, it is for me one fight at a time because I'm not as – it's not full time for me yet like it is, say, Tony. You know, he's dedicated a lot of his time. And he's like, you know, a big part of his career – progression is based around him fighting yeah whereas mine you know i go to work i travel a lot i've sort of done a lot i've got a few other side things that i do you know regarding that are not based in martial arts yeah so yeah for me it's definitely one fight at a time but you know look it's i'll, I'll say this i'll never say never yeah and <laughs> that's a, that's the thing though i like it because especially eternal man they're having a lot of cards and and, <laughs> and when they when you start to get good fighters have have good fights on those cards they start to transcend transcend states so no, yeah, no, definitely a lot of people have like, like I said, regarding, you know, I fought on Hex and Hex is a good show too. Eternal, like Tony's fought on there before. Now I've had this opportunity to fight on their camp. They're really professional about how they go about it. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're very good to work with. They're very reasonable, you know. Um, some promoters can be a bit sort of like, you know, we all know it's a business and they're there to yeah. make money and that's fair enough. But the way they go about it, you know, just they're like, 
when they ask you something and it's like they don't agree, they say they just tend not to be as professional as they as I like Cam is. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've so, seen I've seen them do some stuff, man. I've seen them like uh, be at the point where they should cancel a show and they and they don't, and yeah. it's it's they it's because they were fighters, and as they will say, they they they're doing it for the fighters. If they can break mm-hmm. even, that that they're happy. Yeah, you know, and so look in that regard, like although everyone like look, all of them are businessmen in a way, they do they are very reasonable. They're probably one of the most reasonable sort of promoters that I've ever dealt with. That's even including boxing, and you know, boxing's horrific. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do with. So <laughs> MMA's not as bad as boxing in that regard. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, no, 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 look, it's, uh, like one fight at a time, we'll see how we go, you know, I'll, but I'll never say never. All right, man. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. Is there anything else, before we wrap this up, is there anything else, any other shout outs you missed? I mean, I know you got just about everyone <laughs> fight night, but, uh, anything, yeah. any, anyone you've missed? Oh, look, man, you know, I guess in essence, a lot. Like, first of all, I just want to thank my family. You know, my dad is a big, big part of this team, um, you know, from a young age, he raised all of us boys by himself. So, like, I've got another brother as well. Um, so, Big Joe, you know, he's he's the man. You know, he's a champion. Um, from my mate Robbie, my brother Sav, who's overseas. You know, he's the guy that really got us into martial arts. Peter Shea, Don, the coaches, my jiu-jitsu training partners, my boxing sparring partners, so Lee and Alan. You know, the guys that are in my corner, my mate Stav, Theo. You yeah, know, there's a lot of them that are there. All the sponsors, like, I want to give a big thank you to, especially like Matt, Andy, and Tom. Um, they're some of the guys that, you know, every day we rub shoulders with. And to be honest with you, like you say, the show's impressive because of, you know, the shirts, et cetera, and sort of the build-up and the hype. They make that possible for us to give the viewers and the audience that kind of experience. So that, and, um, you know, I just want to thank my brother Tony for letting me be able to fight alongside him um, to push me in training because, to be honest with you, the training that we did was, like, I thought I wouldn't make it. I really doubted it. Um, the boys at ATT, um, the brothers there, they were like, they literally instilled a lot of belief in me because, you know, they've just, they've been at the high level and they were, they were telling me, they were pushing me. So thanks to them and thanks to Eternal, thanks to the state of SA for letting me and Tony put us on the map. <laughs> and yeah, man, just, you know, every, if I've missed anyone, I really do apologize. It's really hard to sort of fit everyone in because there is so many people in our camp, and I acknowledge that there is a lot of people behind the scenes that don't probably get enough credit. So thank you to all of them, everyone that rocked up from the show. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, well, really appreciate you taking the, the call, Diego, and uh, no, pass, pass uh, my well wishes on to your brother, and hopefully yeah, I'll get to have man. a chat with him soon. Yeah, so I just let him know, message him, and uh, like, obviously he's pretty free. We leave for Japan Thursday morning, so it might be a little bit hard getting us overseas. So if you want to speak to him, you're probably best off getting him before then. Wicked. All right. Um, All right, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Take it easy and nah, uh, rest up. You've you've deserved it. Awesome, man. No, worries. thank you very much. All right, see you later, bro. Bye. Hello. Hi, Ryan. Mitchell. How you doing, sir? Good, man. What's happening? Not a whole lot, or should I say, champ? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> how um how you feeling, man? Yeah, not too bad. Um, chilling. Pretty full. Eating a lot of food, eating a lot of McDonald's last yeah. few days, that's for sure. Mate, without a doubt, look, just just straight away, you, pound for pound, would put away the most food I've ever seen in my life. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm definitely going to have to say that that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> how I, are you I definitely st- like eating some food. But how are you staying at like 145? It doesn't make any sense. You should be like at least a fire hydrant. It doesn't make any Mate. sense. After uh, after the shape and how easy the weight cut was on the weekend, I could I could legitimately go down to Panama a day. Oh, it's insane! It's, I, just, I, it's I, just diet, man. That's that's it. Like I tell you what, I though, stopped eating maccas, started eating good food, and didn't even <laughs> need to cut weight on the weekend. It's um, you know, the photo you took with uh, it was you, uh, Mitch Martin, Callum Potter, all Eternal champs holding your belt up. Yes, Callum looks massive. Mitch looks bigger than you. So. Yeah, I know. He's fighting at bantamweight, and now that I really think about it, I, I could be wrong here, but I feel like Mitch might be bigger than you. <laughs> yeah, it's I. Mitch is a weird one because like he's so full of muscle, <laughs> like it's it's weird. But he has this ability to like I don't know, suck his gut in and push it out. Like <laughs> he has a six pack, but then if he wants to, he can have a beer belly. It's <laughs> one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Um, but I was looking at that photo too, and I was a little bit confused because like, I always thought I was taller than Mitch. But then when I looked at that photo, I was like, wait, am I not taller? 
Oh, it's so, always it's always pretty uh, weird when you see a, a photo of you next to someone. Like I saw a photo of me next to Diego Caruso. He's at yeah. welterweight, and I was like, man, I could be wrong here, but I might be bigger than him. I mean, <laughs> he'd murder me, but still, like I might be bigger. And I was like, it, it's just always interesting when you see yourself next to someone, and then you're like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's also why Mitch and I are like such good partners for each other is because we are very similar sizes. He's like your main um, guy, isn't he? Like, if you guys are sparring, it's it's you and Mitch Martin. Yeah, pretty much, 100%. Um, and, yeah, he's just, you know, at least up until this camp, he's always had the discipline to, um, you know, six weeks out from a fight, he really starts watching what he's eating and he... Um, whereas I like to tell you the truth, haven't really had that before this camp. You know, I, I would, I would still be eating shit food and I would still, oh yeah, you know, have... packing it on. Whereas when he starts eating clean, it just starts coming off him. And that's, uh, you can look at your last, yeah. uh, the, the photo you showed me of your, of your weigh in and, uh, what was it? Two, three years ago. Yeah. 2015, I think in November. Was that the, was that the miles fight? Was that the, um, it was, it was, yeah. So July, I think I think we were back in. No, sorry, mm. incorrect. November. That was Bow and Cornish. Apologies. Yeah. Um, yeah. So both both times, my body probably looked like that. To tell you the truth. <laughs> but it's insane the fact that you could look like that, and and compared to now, and what you, how what's that? Three years. So what were you then? Twenty two, twenty one. Yeah, yeah, twenty three. Jeez. 23, yeah. Should have been in your prime. Was that just from eating, like, the, the way you were dieting? Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, it was all from, like, discipline and just, yeah, diet. Um, you know, I, I, it was also, like, I was in Perth and I didn't, I don't know, I wasn't really used to, like, uh, I don't know. Being with Ben, um, obviously, is, is quite a lot easier to keep discipline, you know, when you've got your coach standing right there and you're not just going to be like, yeah, I'm just going to go to the Maccas now because I can, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and being in Perth, I obviously thought I could cut a few corners um, and I couldn't. And then I woke up, you know, I was just an idiot. So I woke do you up like... on the day of both those fights about four and a half kilos over. Mm. Um, you know, whereas this fight, I woke up on the day 500 grams over. Jeez. You know, so it's it's a different, yeah. So do you like without sweating fights yeah. away from Perth then for that reason? Oh, a hundred percent. Because you haven't 100%. had a, a lot since since that one, have you? Uh, they've all been away. Yeah, um, I mean, I think my record in Perth now is like one and two, you know, or like one and three if you count a boxing fight as well. Um, yeah, I don't do well in in my hometown for some reason, um, but you know, I think uh, yeah, and. I don't know, because I, I fought Miles in my hometown in the main event, and then I obviously fought him on the weekend in his hometown in the main event. Um, and I think he'll agree, like, fighting in front of all your friends, all your family, your gym, it, it puts a lot of pressure on you. Um, and I think I'd be better suited to it now, now that, I'm, now yeah. that I've been on both sides and now I know what it's like. We've but had I think 10 that fights now, or what are we up to, yeah. 11? Uh, 11 now, yeah. Yes. Um, and, yeah, now, now that it's... Now that I've been on both sides, you know, being the hometown hero, being the the hated traveler <laughs> inside, Boy, um, were you. I, I feel like it would definitely, I'd do better now, but yeah, I'd, I, uh, I'd much prefer go over to somewhere else where there's not too much of a where you're more like expectation a pro, of you, you know? You're more like a pro fighter on a trip where it's like in Perth, you probably still have that feeling of like, you're with your friends, your family. That yeah, you of... wake up in your own bed and you, you know, I can go down to my favorite beach on the day yeah. of the fight and just chill out. And it's like, yeah, it's not, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer fight away from home, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Well, going back to um, being the most hated man in Adelaide, uh, <laughs> what, talk, <laughs> talk me through this, man, because I was in that cage with you. And have you seen, uh, I think it was Borat, when he makes out with a guy in the cage and everyone's trying to climb in the cage and kill him? That's what that <laughs> felt like. And it was because of you, uh, <laughs> but it yeah. was it was amazing. Take me through what was going on. Um, it's still a bit of a haze to me, to tell you the truth. But um, and I asked a couple of people that were watching the stream, and they said that they didn't like hear it, um, but I did. You know, it was it was something like I walked out, and all I'm hearing is "fuck you, you're gonna die, he's gonna fucking kill you." Yeah, I heard that too. Um, <laughs> People were screaming at me and like, I love it. It's, it's cool. Like, 
I don't mind it. You know what I mean? But once I, uh, you know, once I'm getting into the, you know, when I'm getting uh, Vaseline up and I'm having like people at tables like screaming at me, like I loved it, but you know, they it, were, it's still. You probably didn't even know. notice this, uh, but when you were basically, I was about to announce you, uh, they were leaving their table and coming around to like the commentary side and they were like making choke signs and they were oh, going. Oh no, I 100% saw all that. Yeah. That was insane. Um, people were coming up and like shaking the cage and like <laughs> making me look at them. And then when I looked at them, they were like telling me I was going to die and that he was going to choke me and shit. Um, and those people really fucked up because it just gave me so much energy. Like I have, you know, for anyone that knows me, I'm a massive pro wrestling fan. Like I always have been, I always will be. And I've always wanted to be the bad guy. And I told Ben weeks out, I said, if they make me the bad guy, I will play it. Like (laughs) I, I'm, you know, I try my best to not be an asshole to people, but when they put me in that position, I felt like I had to play it. You know what I mean? That's where me and uh, Ben Vickers always differ on that. He, He likes the old, like, Sort of shake hands. Oh, he hated it. Oh, he fucking hated it. I, and I but, loved it. And I was telling him, yeah. I was like, man, I mean, uh, Ben saw it too. And I was like, what they gave him, I was like, they they got back. And yeah, you, see, the difference is, you were, and this is where I see it, you were gracious to Miles. And that's all that matters. You yeah. were a dick to the other dicks. And, that, and, yeah. that's, and that's okay. And you know what? I reckon most of the crowd, bar one guy and you know who I'm talking about, but yeah. they, they understood when you won, it's kind of like their game against you. They kind of, Oh, you got us this time. Like a lot of them were, were okay with it in a way. Some yeah. just wanted to stab you, but yeah, they were the ones that were just as bad yelling at you and they didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean the one, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if I like want to say this on the podcast, but like, um, <laughs> Uh, I do actually, the person that was coming up to the cage and like who he's, he's, he was the only person that it didn't get under my skin, but like I wanted to make a point to see that person after the fight, huh. it, it, you know, just to at least look at them just to see their reaction because. Uh, same um, one you flipped off? I, yeah, that I flipped off. I yeah. can't remember if I did. I don't even, I haven't seen it. I probably did. Um, <laughs> Yeah, most likely that guy. Uh, what I actually found out, um, and that I actually feel really bad about, is that that was actually one of his family members. Uh, and if I had known that, I wouldn't have said anything to him afterwards because I could only imagine me watching one of my family members fight and then the guy who beats him comes up to you afterwards and has a go at you. Like, I wouldn't have, you know, I could understand why he would now want to kill me. Yeah, um, man, I but, said, I, like, the ch- I said it to you in the change room. Like, it's not, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. It's one of those things where it was, it's almost like a, that sportsmanship in a way. Like, the crowd comes at you, you go out the crowd. I guarantee you they're over it. And the main bit, the difference that makes you a, a, a good guy and a wanker is how you interact with Miles. And that was that was professional as. And I think the rest was just, it is what it is. It happened. And it's not bad. You know, maybe don't do it again, but <laughs> I would encourage it. Ben will yell at me uh, for yeah. for doing it. But man, I loved it, and um, I, I don't think there was any ill will, like real yeah, ill will. And in it was, it. yeah. And to me, like I see the entertainment side of it, and yes. that's why I wanted to give Adelaide the chance to tell me how much they hated what they just saw, <laughs> and that's why, like, I wanted them to boo me after when I got on the microphone. I wanted them to boo me because I yeah. wanted them to have a chance to like let it out and tell me again how much they hated me. You know what I mean? Oh. They put me in that position. I just played for it. Oh, you know? n- there's um, nothing I hate more than uh, when I ask a guy something on the mic and I just get nothing back. Like that's, that's sort of your little, your little moment. And I don't think you rubbed it in, man. I really don't. I think you, you did exactly what you're saying now. You kind of played into the entertainment of it. Look, there will be a trilogy down the road and, yeah. uh, and that, that plays into it. And I, Look, I think it was good. I don't think it was bad. I think, if anything, it was it was part of the game, and it was it was quite comical. And like you said, if if you'd done it to Miles, it's a different ball game. But this, it was part of fights and entertainment. Yeah, I mean, you know, I can't stress enough how much respect I really do have for Miles Simpson. Um, I still remember watching him fight Jai Bradney, um, and I remember I was at the back, and we were both five and zero at the time. 
And I remember I was watching him warm up and I was like, yeah, he's, he's obviously pretty good. But um, I hadn't heard of him up until that point. Um, I wasn't like as into the Australian MMA scene, at least as I am now. And then when I went out and watched his fight, I was like, oh, that's why he's in the position he's in. That's why he's in the main event because he's fucking great. You know what I mean? Um, and then to even have a chance to fight him the first time was like, oh, you know, wow, cool. I'm actually getting to fight one of these guys that is, you know, in the in the upper echelon of the of the featherweights in the country. And um, obviously it didn't go my way that time. Um, and I've just been waiting for a chance to um, prove that, you know, we're on the same level. And, yeah, I'm, I'm just really happy that, um, you know, that it's kind of gone like this and that it has really opened up a door for a third one because I think that we could both, be better off not fighting in our hometowns and maybe go to like neutral territory and just, you know, have a crack in front of a bunch of people that, you know, aren't our friends and family. Yeah. Because it does put a lot of pressure on it. And it, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to have a third fight with Miles. Now, um, do, do you want that fight sort of straight away or what's, what's your, your thoughts with that? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm cool whenever, um, if he'd like to, sure. Um, you know, if that's something that he really wants to do, you know, a couple of months from now, two months from now in, in the Gold Coast or something, I'll, obviously I'll say yes. Um, there is only one other person really though that, well, there's a couple, but... Um, Please name them I mean, <laughs> um, but the main one I'd say would be Michael Tobin. Um, he's the, he was the first um, featherweight champion uh, of Eternal. Um, I sat down at Eternal 2 and watched his fight with David Greaves, uh, with my coach, Ben. And that was the first time that I said to Ben, I think I could beat that guy. And he went, well, oh, I don't know about right now, but in the future. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, I think I could, man. I think I could. I probably couldn't have then. Um, but I definitely can now, you know. And um, I've been calling him out ever since I was, you know, pretty much after every fight I've been calling him out. Um, and I've never had a yes, you know. He's the only other featherweight champion of Eternal that I haven't beaten yet. Well, so, yeah, the best way to call him out is with uh, jiu-jitsu because he has a pretty amazing uh, submission victory. So that could be intriguing. Uh, and would you want that soon? Would you want a quick turnaround? or? Yeah, I'll, I'll take it whenever. You know, I, I really don't mind. Um, I just want that fight. It's been a fight that I've been literally like calling out for so long now. Um, but in my head, it would make it perfect. It's like when I was sitting there at Eternal 2, I wanted that belt. I always wanted it. Um, you know, Ben said, stick with me, we'll get it. And 30 events later, I've got it. Um, yeah, on the way, I've beaten the other, you know, I've beaten two eternal champions now. Um, I want that last one just so that I can solidify myself as being the number one featherweight in this division. Yeah, your your belt, there's something about it, man. That just and, and I haven't even been there for the whole journey, but there's something about your belt that just to me, looking at you and Ben, I'd never say means more, but it's got a certain sort of uh, shine to it. You know, the Della, uh, Jack Della's belt, Mitch Martin's belt, all of that. But there's something about you and Ben that feels like you kind of started it all in a way. Yeah, we, um, yeah, I mean, when I walked into this gym, uh, you know, seven years ago, I knew that I would... I would be sticking here for life. You know, I remember there's a sign um, just above like the main entrance to our gym and it says it's better to um, sweat in the gym than it is to bleed in the streets. And I remember I saw that sign and I saw the cage and I just, I just looked at the area and I just was like, I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. This is the first day I walked into this gym. I still remember the first time I saw Ben and he was like this small, angry man. And I just thought <laughs> I'm never going to like that guy. Like, he just looked at me with this look on his face. And I remember just thinking, like, he doesn't like me and I'm probably not going to like him. And now, you know, over these years, like, we've just built such a good friendship and a bond. And, like, um, this is all I've ever wanted my entire life. You know what I mean? And Ben knows that. And um, and now I'm, like, you know, one of the main trainers at the gym now. And it's, like, we've been working towards this now for years. And, um and Ben knows my faults, you know, and one of them was 100% discipline. Um, and so for that to, you know, kind of come full circle and to kind of get as many tools under me as I can, including being able to mentally prepare, um, yeah, it was definitely a really special moment on the weekend. Yeah, man, um, I've heard, uh, me and Ben have obviously talked uh, in detail about, about a lot of guys. And, uh, yeah, he's he's told me a lot about that sort of, 
uh, journey with you a little bit. And it, yeah, it just, I could feel it, man. And, and you're the first guy I've seen win. And like I said, I'll never compare uh, fighters to other fighters or fights to other fights, but because I am a victim at the moment, but getting to call you like the new eternal featherweight champion, there was, I don't think I've ever been as happy to say that to someone. I could feel it in you. Like it was, it was really bizarre. Not to get too super homo, but um, it was, dude. Wow, I'm pretty it was, sure I was looking dead into your eyes when you were saying and you as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no homo. Uh, but yes, it was. It, I'm it not was, saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. And I even to the point where there was the photographer, I was trying to take a photo of like Miles and his team. And I was like, hey, look, Ryan's over there, like pretty much crying on the belt. Can we take a photo of that? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, you know, I, I was in this gym first. Like, um, I, I helped. Um, the Shane you know, Williams this, days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not kidding. Um, I saw him the other day as well. It was really good to chat with him. Um, yeah, I, I was in this gym like, you know, in 2012 and like, I helped make this MMA team. I helped make this this gym to where it is now. And like to see everybody else winning belts around me was, you know, like obviously I was super happy for them, but like I just was in such a, you know, I just downward spiraled. Yeah, how that does it? How point. did that feel? Like what? Because you, I you... just felt like I knew I was fucking up. You know, like I knew that I had the talent and the skill, and obviously the help in this gym, you know, and, and the, and the people to get to that position. And I just thought, man, I'm just fucking this up. And then, Did it spur you on though, to see like Jack, Mitch Martin? Oh, a hundred percent, you know, to be, to be there when Mitch Martin like won the first time was amazing. Um, and then uh, like, sadly, like both times that he's gone over to defend it, I haven't been able to go with him and like, um, you know, to be at work as well, like, um, and then just having to like run and check my phone to get messages like he's won. Like it makes me, you know, it makes me burst into tears. Like I'm just so happy for these guys. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I knew that like I needed to do it too. Oh, you know, and I have it's people so good. In, yeah, I have people in my beginner's class, like, you know, point seeing all the belts on the wall and they go, which one's yours? Because they <laughs> just expect me to have one. And I go like, oh, none of them, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. and then they're like, you know, and it's like, it's not even. And they stop listening and they walk out and they exactly. go to another They're gym. like, I'm just going to go do one of Jack's classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's something I've always wanted and now I've, I've been able to get it and it's good. No, it's, it's, good times. it's really awesome. It's really, it's really good to see it all sort of culminate in that belt. Now it's like you said, it's only the beginning and it, but it feels like one chapter's over. You know what I mean? You got that. You got it that does. first one. Now it's on to other belts, which is something Ben and Cam making it an eternal podcast. are all like, oh, talk about eternal. Uh, but this is the thing I think you guys need, and it's my opinion is worth nothing. Okay, so so take that. But I That's think for the wider MMA community in Australia, I do believe that someone from MMA Clinic needs a belt outside of Eternal. Now you can tell Agreed. me to shut the fuck up if you if you believe, but Eternal, although all of you guys have viciously earned it, you've seen all the fights, all the matchups. Take Josh's for example, the the yeah. last recent one. Like they don't just match you up with guys that you could beat. Okay, you all have tough fights, but Eternal does have that MMA clinic link to it. You know, you there has been a lot of guys calling you guys out, saying you get given title shots, which I don't believe, but. Mm. It, it is there. Is there any of you guys that uh, have that goal of taking, going to a hex, going to an AFC and taking a belt from there? Is that, is that on the horizon? I'd absolutely love to. Um, the, when I said that there's like one or two people I'd love to call out, number one is Michael Tobin because he, you know, he is number one technically in the country. Um, and, Obviously, I believe I'm number one in the country when it comes to featherweight, so I want to take him out. And he's also the, you know, he's the original eternal featherweight champion. That's why I want to take him out. Number two is Joshua Coolbow because he is the hex featherweight champion. Um, I remember sitting down at a friend's house, you know, I can't remember how long ago it was, and uh, I watched him fight for the belt. And uh, my friends were saying to me, like, do you reckon you could beat this guy? And I was watching him fight, and I was like, damn, he's actually fucking really good. And I was like, you know, I want to, I do want to fucking get in there and I want to test myself against him. 
Um, so yeah, I'd love to fight Cool about. I'd love to fight. I don't know who the AFC champion is, um, but yeah, I'd absolutely love to fight them whenever. Um, at the end of the day, I just want to prove that I'm one of the best featherweights in the country, if not the best, you know. And uh, if you think that you are, and if you actually have the accolades to back that up, then let's figure it out, you know. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, if you, whoever says um, that we get the opportunities, all you have to do is really look at our records and and see that we're not fighting fucking bums over here. We're getting given hard fights um, every single time. Um, and, you know, a, a thing to us for being able to come through it pretty easily every time by the looks of it as well. That's uh, that's that's a beauty, man. And uh, I feel like ending on that. So is there is there anything that you want to, anyone you want to thank that you didn't get a chance to uh, before we wrap this up? Oh, God, I didn't thank anybody on the... Uh... No, you were too busy <laughs> saying, fuck you, Adelaide, which I enjoyed. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I mean, the people that I need to thank, I have, you know. Um, I've, I've seen them in person. We've had our own kind of... Um, you know, our own moments. Um, but, you know, thanks to Eternal, obviously, for putting it on. Thank you to Miles for, for taking the fight. And, um, yeah, I really do hope to see Miles in the future for the trilogy because um, he's a respectful person, um, you know. And I know that it's not like he's telling everybody in the crowd to start abusing the fuck out of me when yeah. I walk out. But either way, I loved it, you know. I don't I don't really care what Adelaide thinks of me, but I, I have – high respect for Miles Simpson um, and I really can't wait to see him for the trilogy. Uh, obviously, if I get Michael Tobin or Joshua Coolabout before then, I'll be p- pretty fucking happy too. That's uh, that's absolutely wonderful, man. Really appreciate the call and uh, it's Alex Volkanovski is the featherweight champ of AFC. So, don't know if he's still got it but, you know, that'd, that'd be a good fight too. <laughs> yeah, alright, cool. Get me into the UFC and I'll fight him. That's fine with me. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you know? All uh, right, Ryan, man, enjoy the nine kilos of food you're going to eat for one meal. Uh, oh, my and God, I did. Yeah. I, I, will, uh, I will chat to you later, man. I really appreciate it. And honestly, I don't think I've felt better about anyone winning a belt. So, Thank you very much, Tim Lee. That means the fucking world, man. Uh, take but, it easy, yeah. son. Thank you very much, mate. Have a good day. See you later, bro. See ya. All right, that was Ryan Gray, the new, the new... Eternal featherweight champion. Uh, quite a journey to get to that belt. And uh, you always got to love a pro wrestling bad guy in MMA. He's really embracing the role. And I find it, I really find it quite hilarious. Um, he really is a good dude. And I couldn't be happier for anyone to to get a belt. But yeah, uh, that was, yeah, like I said, Ryan Gray and Diego Caruso uh, from Northside MMA, uh, Northside Gym, sorry. And uh, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let us know. If you want anyone else interviewed, you got any guests, you, you want to hear from certain people and you enjoy these style, uh, let me know and we'll, we'll hook it up. Uh, either way, I think Eternal MMA will be in 33. Uh, Eternal MMA 33 will be on the Gold Coast or some shit. Southport Sharks. I don't know. I'm not doing it, so I don't care. Nah, uh, but if you do care, uh, you can go to EternalMMA.com. Uh, and uh, I think the next card might be in Perth in May. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, you'll hear me when you hear me, and you'll see me when you see me. My name is Richard Chinley. This was Eternal MMA Uncensored, and I will catch you next time. See you later. Eternal MMA Uncensored. <laughs>